As opposed to showing up to that immersion as my best self for an event called The Great Man Within, I showed up, hung over, and my great man told me, you'll never be me if you don't quit drinking. These things and morning routines, and it started to enhance my life and get me to the next level. Then COVID hit, of course, and then in May of 2020, I did the meditation that we just went through. But of course, it was COVID, so it was a virtual immersion. So I was in my basement, I was hungover, and I did that, like as opposed to showing up to that immersion as my best self for a, a, an event called The Great Man Within, I showed up, hung over, and my great man told me, you'll never be me if you don't quit drinking. But I didn't quit, right, it was COVID, I started drinking more. The stress was building, there were things going on with my kids. I was out of my mind, and I just kept picking up, picking up, and picking up steam. Then in February of 21, I heard a saying, using despite no, the definition of addiction, using despite knowing there'll be negative consequences. And of course, again, I was hung over. I thought, well, that's me. Maybe I do have an addiction, right? And then in March of 21, I joined a different group called I Am A Comeback. Anybody familiar with that one? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I Am A Comeback is a group that is all about willpower. It's only men. It's all tough guys on their retreats, they're flipping tires and shooting guns. Um, but it's none of the science, none of the dopamine, none of the addictive nature is. It's all about alcohol, it's just like ketchup. You can give up ketchup, can't you? Why can't you give up alcohol? And I went 90 days without drinking and I felt so good, I kept going. I went eight months. But in that group, you got the choice between abstinence or control. And I chose control. And they said, at some point, if you want to have some wine in Tuscany or you want to drink at your daughter's wedding, that's okay. So on my anniversary that fall, I consciously decided to drink and start exercising control. And I put a plan together, a written plan. And I am a person that creates plans and finishes plans. I was committed to this. I was going to exercise control. And I did for months. Ended up going to nationals in tennis and actually winning it. My partner and I went 11 and 0. Like as opposed to just going and losing. First time I went to nationals, by the way, I hit some vodka in my suitcase because <laughs> my coach didn't want us drinking, but I took a little just so I'd have it. Um, and everybody had a beer afterwards and I took one sip, threw them out of way. Like I was exercising control. Thanksgiving, I had one glass of wine with the cousins. Right? Like how did that happen? Even that night I went with the plan, just gonna have a little wine, gonna have one martini. Nope, still regret that to this day. So I took another four months off, tried to exercise control again, or, and took another four months off, and then I decided in the summer to exercise control again until I had a similar outcome. A little worse this time, actually, I won't even share it with you. Just embarrassing, drunken stories, right, that we've all had. <clears throat> and then September 26, I joined Project 90. And I came into Project 90 um, fully deciding, and I decided uh, at that time I was gonna make a decision, right? I had to figure this out once and for all, either I was gonna drink or I wasn't gonna drink. And I joined almost every call, and as busy as we all are, man, I put it on my calendar. I poloed all the time. I listened to the videos. I did everything, because I just wanted to conquer this piece one way or another. And on day 45, after all of these classes with Victoria and Sarah and James, uh, it happened to be Sarah that night. She was going through dopamine, the effects on your brain, the effects of addiction. It hit me like a ton of bricks that this had happened to me. And while I'm responsible for my own actions, it's an addictive poison. It was modeled for me by my family my whole life. It's been glamorized in everything we look at. All the guards are stacked against you in this. And I got really angry and I decided I'm never drinking again. And I made a polo about it. I got on and told everybody in Project 90, I'm angry, this is what happened, and I'm never drinking again. And I believe that for me and for most of us, until you say it out loud, it's not true, right? Because you can always go back on it if you don't tell somebody. If it's just a deal with you, like I'm only gonna have two on Friday, if you don't have an accountability partner, so I said it out loud, and a cool thing happened. A few others followed suit. Not everybody, but some jumped on and said, I'm not, I'm, this is it for me too. 
but it was a breakthrough moment. And ever since then, my mind's been clear. I've known, I'm done, I don't have to worry about it anymore. Right, the energy, the whole James Clear Atomic Habits, it's much easier to make one big decision than a different decision every day. I just don't have to worry about it, it's such a blessing. Um, but it takes time, and if you're in Project 90, you still have to make that decision, right? And when you do, you don't have to tell people. You don't have to tell everybody, like I am now. <laughs> but, you know, I told my wife that night too. This is it. Um, but I didn't go tell my friends and family that night. Eventually I did. And the outcomes of 15 months, you know, my journey's been three years since the first time I started this. I went eight months, four months, so in 15 months, whatever that adds up to. I got about 30 months alcohol-free with some pieces in there. Energy, focus, self-confidence. I'm no longer a prisoner, no dirty secrets. I am a man of faith, um, and I saw you know, different hands go up, and that's fine, but <clears throat> I was, uh, after COVID, we didn't go to Mass as much, and um, we went back to Mass one time after I decided to quit. And in the Catholic faith, you take the Eucharist, the bread, don't take the wine anymore, and that's when you're the clearest, the cleanest to God. And I always pray at that time, and I thank, give grat, you know, gratefulness, and I pray for my kids. And in a rote prayer, what I didn't even realize, I prayed in Mass that day, help me with my alcohol. And I hadn't drank in like six months. But I realized I was doing that for 10 years. I was praying that in Mass. And I just started crying. My wife's looking at me like, why are you crying? Because this prayer that I've been praying all these years, I've finally accomplished. So now I'm closer in my faith, right? I'm closer to God because of that. Relationships, of course. Weight, skin, nails, voice, eyes, hair. I was telling some of the ladies last night. For like the last month, my wife keeps saying, you have more hair. <laughs> and I'll show you some pictures, it's crazy. Right? Like my body is rejuvenating itself. Over the years, people have told me I have a great voice, but I haven't heard it in years. And since I quit drinking, four or five times now people have said it to me on phone calls. Like my voice is getting stronger because I'm not poisoning my voice every night. Right? Business, of course. Golf and tennis. I shared about tennis. Um, so breaking 70 is a big deal in golf. And I did it when I was young, but I haven't done it in 15 years. I become alcohol free, nothing changes. I don't take any more lessons, I don't do any more work. I'm just waking up, bright eyed, I'm getting to the range, and I go out and I shoot 69 in a tournament, which I've never sniffed it before in a tournament, being alcohol free. But there's so many things you can point to where the only difference, the only variable, is that you're not drinking anymore, and these things are happening. Self-love, it was 16 months today, actually, it was the 26th. And I just feel unstoppable. So this is my little before and after. I don't think I was horrible here, right? But the difference is pretty startling to me. I'm just brighter. <laughs>